Okay, welcome guys once again. I want to show you on how I was able to make this beautiful bubu dress, this beautiful bubu sheet dress, and you can see how the side looks like for the armhole. You can see how it looks like at the side, and this other side as well. You can see how it looks like. I will be glad to you guys to stay tuned to know on how to get this. You can see how I was able to place the design. I will be able to explain to you how this design was made. And the back as well, you can see the designs which I placed on the back. How you able to achieve something like this and even nicer than this? So just stay tuned to follow on how the process on how to get yours. So I really appreciate you guys for all your love you guys have shown me so far. I really appreciate you guys for all the support. Thank you, thank you very much. I appreciate you. Thank you very much. Don't forget to subscribe in case you are new to the channel. And please comment down below. Share to your friends to also subscribe. Thank you. You need to be promoted to get more views. To get more work here is to show you guys what I know how to do best for you to also do better than me. That's the reason why I'm here. So thank you guys. Let's go straight to business. So before getting that started, you need your basic measurements for your dress. So that is a long blue gown which you want to sew. And what you need to do, take note of is your shoulder measurement. So you need your shoulder measurement when you want to take your measurement for this your bubu gown. So how do you do to get your shoulder measurement? What you are going to do is to get from your neck bone. So this is your spinal cord at this side, which is your neck bone, which you have at this side. That is where you are going to take your measurement. The measurement is going to start from. So what you are going to do is to place your tape at exactly that bone here to get your sleeve length. Because we are going to work with our sleeve length of this or address which we want to make right now so this your sleeve does not this that depends on where your client wants you to sit so from this bone right here so you can see the bone which i which is here now this bone that you can see here so this is where your tape is going to come from this bone then you just have to place it through the shoulder like this so with this now it depends on the length which your client wants you to take from that is where you are going to stop for the sleeve so if your client wants you to stop here or down, it all depends on your client and the fabric which you are working with. So that one is also very important. Make sure the fabric you are working with, you take measurement of your fabric to know where it is going to sit. So you let your, your client to know where the sleeve is going to sit. And if there is any way for it to join, like what I'm making now, the fabric was not enough to get to the length. So I was able to join it based on the kind of flounding which I'm working with. I'm working with with a um how is it called papers um, um paper like uh, paper lace yes paper lace so i'm working with a paper lace so it was very easy and able for me to trim out what i want so i took my measurement from there now to the sleeve length which i'm on so after getting your measurement for your from there to your sleeve length what you will need is to get your bust measurement for your client so you go ahead to get your bust measurement for your client. So after taking your bust measurement for your client, you are also go ahead, go ahead to you are also go ahead to take your under bust measurement, which is your waistline. Go ahead to take your waistline measurements for your client because this your waistline is going to work safely for the under bust. So you need to use your waistline. After getting your waistline measurement, you are also going to take your hip measurement. So what you have at your that is the same thing which we are going to make use of to your full length and don't forget to take the full length of your client so we like it to sit below your knee so it flows and it will be able for her to work with a perfect finish when it flows it should not hang above your foot so it should go below so it flows a bit not that too much flow so after getting that what you are going to do you need to take your shoulder to your waist measurement just like this from your shoulder from your shoulder right here you have to take to your waist measurement because you really need where your waist is going to sit because that is where your shape is going to come from so to your hip pain downward so after getting those measurements let me take you to the working table and let me show you what to do about it so let's go there so here i have my fabric here now so my fabric as you can see now is on full so i am sorry i'm gonna have to cut this like i Never, it was never in 
my mind or never in my plan to shoot a video but it is, it is better too late than never so i just want to show you because somebody might need this so i just decided to drop at least to show you guys on how to go about this so what i did as i ex as i explained earlier or to get your shoulder measurements so my shoulder measurements which i got now gave me this plus my extension as i told you my fabric was not enough so i was able to extend it due to the amount of the lace which i'm working with i was able to extend if you take a look at this other part i was the one that which i was the one that trimmed out this part for the lace to come out beautiful than just sitting rough like that so after i was able to get that so it all depends on the fabric which you're working with. there are some fabric that will not give you that space to get exactly the design that i have but you can still go ahead to join your you can still go ahead to join your fabric then there is a there is something which they are selling in the market it is most people know it as lace mount it has designs and you can go ahead to sew it on this and it will be as if it is a direct lace mount which you are using so that aside so after getting my fullness of my shoulder what i was able to do was to get my shoulder measurement so my sh shoulder measurement is my shoulder measurement is 16 which is 8 so let me use this part because i've already cut out my neckline so my sh shoulder measurement is 16 which is 8 16 divided by 2 which is 8 so after getting my 8 now i came in by one inch from my eight inches i came in by one inch that is what you can see right here so from my eight inches i came in by one inch for my shoulder my shoulder is 16 divided by two gives me eight so after i place it i came in by one inch reducing my shoulder by one inch so that was how i was able to get this point right here so from this point you can decide on how many you want your band to be at this other part of the style you can decide how many you want your band to be so what i have here for my band is 4.5 which i have here for my band so from this part to this end here is 4.5 so it totally depends on the length which you are working with and how open you want your side to be for your side opening how open you want it to be so after getting my sleeve opening for the for the front my journey for the front which should be four inches which i can begin with then for my neck i went I, my neck width is four inches so i went on to take four inches for my neck width and four inches for my neck depth that is what i have here and i connect it from my neck width i connect it to my neck depth so after getting my four inches for my neck width and four inches for my neck depth and connect it then for the depth of my back which is not here now but the depth of my back i came in by one inch 1.5 inch rather i came in by 1.5 inch for my neck that depth so let me say but the width is going to be the same but the depth is going to be higher than the front by 1.5 inches for the depth of your back so that was how i was able to get this so after getting this measurement make sure you take your full length plus extra four inches for your sewing allowance because i'm still going to join this part and you still need to fold the hemming part of your dress which you are making for so let me that as let me bring my back for you to see what i'm trying to say okay so this is for the back you can see the back is higher than the front so the back my back depth is 1.5 inches which i came in and the width is the same thing as the front width so this is literally very easy to make if you want to do this so what you will need to know when doing this you must make sure what you are getting for your neck width and your neck depth is able for your client is able to pass through your, the head of your client that is very important make sure it is very it is able to pass through the head of your client you can as well extend it making it as a boot shape for the, your left foot so you can as well extend it to 4.5 or even 5 inches to extend it so just make sure what you have here is going to sit and pass through your client's head with ease it should not be that space or that free it should, but you should pass your client's head so after getting that and get your full as i showed you i have gone ahead to create my own design you can go ahead to create your designs just like this but i'll still explain to you how i was able to get my design so let me place it in a bigger place for you to see how my designs look like so you can see the designs which i created for my front so 
these designs are, are was just created by me i just come up with a clue i started arranging my fabric until i got to a final conclusion on this so you, you can decide to use this and you can decide to create your own designs you should be creative about this when doing this you can use any shape at all to create your designs and place it in a good order you might not arrange it like it might be scanty but make sure it comes out neat and fine you can be creative with your design you can use any shape at all which you find close to you to create your own shape like what you can see if you take a closer look my shapes are not equally the same way with the rest you can see this one right here is very small and you can see this one as well and this one is very small i have the three different shapes right here you can see this one at this other part this one is smaller this one is bigger than this one and this one is bigger than this one so that is how the shapes are so you can go ahead to make your own shape your own design you can be creative about that as i just said earlier so just go ahead to place your designs for your front just like the way you can see mine and you can scan see it it will still come out very nice just be creative with yours i bet you you will have a very nice look down even mine so let me go ahead to show you how my back look like okay so here you can see that this is my back and you can see the design is not that much because this is the back what you should focus on when making your design is the front because that is the first view people will always come across on and take notice on what you are putting on so your front should always be your main focus you don't actually need to even put at the back if you don't want to but for me i want the back to have something glance of beauty at the back also then when you look at the front when you, look, you are looking from the back you can see something nice then when you come to the front it is something different and beautiful so that is what i am trying to do here so you can go as well make your back as design as you can as it can be so you just go ahead to make yours nicer so what i'm going to do now i'm going to place this on my table and i'm going to show you on what to do then step by step take you through on how to finish it this is very easy for you to do so let's go back to the working table this is my front which i am working with and you can see the lines which i told you to take in for your front your shoulder and you can see at the close to the hemi part which i have here so what i'm going to do for this my marks which i have here, i'm still going to replicate the same mark that i have here at this other side which means i'm going to sew the same thing to this other side so what i'm going to do i'm going to sew 0 0.5 from my neck line down to this point then from this point same 0 0.5 i'm going to complete this to the hem so after completing this to the hem after sewing what i'm going to do to each of my side i'm going to climb this so by then this side will be closed and this side will be closed so i'm going to run a stitch and climb this and sew this one to meet up this one separately and sew this other side as well separately so make sure you take it as a square sew it close here make sure it's stitch there to make it tight then come again then come down to this point and stitch here to make it tight then come again so i'm going to do the same thing at this other side so let me go ahead to do that before coming to show you on what to do next so as i told you i have gone ahead to sew what i showed you and you can see how it is looking very neat at the outside so it is the inside which is going to look somewhat rough because of the fabric which i'm working with so this is what i have after telling you go ahead to stitch it from there to here give a space stitch it from there to here then you go ahead to turn this in so this is the inside so this is how the inside looks like how the inside looks like and this is how the outside looks like so you can see how neat it is so after doing this what you are going to do now is to get the full length of your of your bubble gown which you are making get your full length of your bubble gown then what you are going to do at this part you are going to hem it first so you can see what i have i have hemming gum first i hem it first so my fabric does not shift then i go ahead to sew it so it does not move and give me difficulty in sewing because of the fabric which i am working with and also for your designs which you are going to place with your ankara fabric or any kind of fabric which you prefer to work with what you are going to do after placing your fabrics on your on your gown which you are working with to know the design or the shape which you want your designs to create for you what you are going to do after that is to pin each and every one of them make sure you pin them 
with either two pins. It depends on how big your pattern is. So after pinning all your designs, what you are going to do, you are going to take it to the uh, work table again and use your hemming gum on them. You are going to use your hemming gum and put inside your anchor fabric. You are going to put it under it to face between this your main fabric and your and your anchor fabric which you are placing. Then you are going to hem it to make it stabilize on the fabric. That is the essence of putting your hemming gum. So you are going to make it stable. So when it is now stable to your main fabric, what you are going to do now is to use the zigzag stitch, interlocking machine, the zigzag stitch. That is what you are going to use to sew here. So it depends on how close you want it to be. That is how your zigzag is going to stitch. All that is how I was able to get all my lines done. So just go ahead to do it like that. Make sure you use your hemming gum to stabilize your pattern so it does not shift away from where your shape is before you go ahead to sew it around. So after doing that and hemming it down, you can see my down shape. I've showed you I have hem. So what I'm going to do now is to show you how to get your measurement on the main body because that is very important on how to get your accurate measurement. So let me go ahead to draw my so you can see the fabric which I'm working with. I'm going to make this video very easy and fast, quick for you to understand. So I'll try my best to make sure you understand it step by step. So let me go ahead to draft it then explain to you in a better way for you to understand. So let's go there. Okay, so what I have here now is my measurement and this is my shoulder. So what I did was to take from my shoulder to my armhole, which I'm going to make work with is 10. So it totally depends on the person, the client which you are working with. The person which you are working with is not big, like not fat. So the boss of what I'm working with now is boss of 42. That's what I'm making the ammo to be 10 from my shoulder length. So if the person which you are working with is not big, you can make it 9 inches. So it depends on the person which you are working with. So what I'm doing now, my ammo measurements which I took here is 10 inches. Then my waist is 17, which I took from the shoulder to waist 17. And you can as well take from your client your shoulder to her hip. So what I have from my shoulder to my hip is 26. So that is my 26, which I have here from my shoulder to my hip. Then from my shoulder to my full length, that is what I have here. So after getting your measurements like this, you are going to make sure you rule your lines to indicate where your measurements are going to be. So after getting that, I will go over to the vertical measurements. Okay, so here is my vertical measurement and you can see my fabric is on 2. So our measurement is going to be divided by 2. So how to get your measurement now? I am using my armhole measurement for my bust. So this is where my armhole is and this is where my tip is right now. So what I was able to do was to get my bust measurement. After getting my bust measurement, I calculate what do I have from here to this part. So what I have from here to here i divide it by two so after dividing it by two minus my bust measurement that is my bust measurement from that end right there to this point as an example is my bust measurement so measurement from here to here to this other end i divide it by two so after dividing it by two i place one at the other part and the other one at this other part that was how i was able to get my bust measurement so this is my hip measurement, which I have right now. So I did the same thing to get my hip measurement. So from my hip measurement, what I have from here to this other end, I divide it by two and place one at this other part and place one at that other part. And I gave a mark like that. So what I have from this end to this end, from that end to that end, that's the same thing I'm going to place up till the hemming part, from that part to that part, the same measurement from here to here. Then I rule a straight line connecting it together. Like that connecting together then from there i was able to get my waist shape because i did the same for my waist up to my bust and did the same for this part up to my bust so take note those marks which i kept when getting my measurement that was the same mark i placed my tape on from getting my bust take my waist and my hip and I make my shape like that take note when getting your measurements you are going to get if you are getting your bust measurement you are going to plus one inch your boss divided by two because my pattern now is placed on two because of the back and front so when you once you get your boss measurement divided by two you are going to plus one inch for sewing allowance that is sorry one inch for ease 
So that, that one inch for is that is what you're going to include in your in all the measurements which you are going to make for your bust, your waist, and your hip for you to have a little bit of ease. Hope you understand what I'm trying to say. So that is what you are going to get. So what I'm going to do now is to sew from my armhole now, which I made my bust measurement the same. I'm going to connect from here to my waist, from my waist to my hip, and from my hip to my full length. I'm going to do the same for the other part. Then I'm going to bias my neckline. I'm going to do it with bias. I believe you know how to make to bias your neckline by now. So I'm going to do it then. I'll place it on your mannequin for you to see the finish work. I hope you understand what I just said. I really hope you understand because I try my best to make it easy. If in case you don't understand, let me know in any area which you don't understand. Let me see if I can correct you with your messages. So don't forget to comment and give the video a thumbs up if you find it helpful. Share to your friends for them to also come and learn this simple way of getting your booboo -boo dress. So thank you very much. I really appreciate it. So let me show you the finished work of this after I go ahead to complete it. And take note, please. Very important before I forget. So when after placing your fabric in two, just like the way I have right now, you are going to pin them down. Take note of that. I did my pinning. I forgot to tell you earlier. So make sure you pin them down to make sure when you are sewing, it does not shift away from your lines. So make sure you, you pin your fabric down at both ends. Pin them down, make sure your fabric are in place so that when you are sewing, it does not give you difficulty in sewing. It goes very easy. So just make sure you do that so your work will be neat, comes out good and nice at the end. So let me go ahead to do the finish work then. Don't forget to share and subscribe in case you are new to the channel. You are welcome. Don't forget to share and subscribe. Comment down below to tell me how, how you see the work, if it is easy for you to make. So let's do it. So you can see me placing my designs already and this is the last. You can see how I was able to scanty it. I don't want to put all of them in one place because it will not be enough. So I, I'm just going to to scamp So this is the type of stone that I said I should show you in case you want to stone yours. You can be able to buy this. You can go ahead to buy this. But this is very easy. It has already been placed for you just to arrange it and stone. So you can see this part which is obvious that this is a silver stone which you are working with. So how to make use of this stone just to loosen it from this part. Just like this. make sure you take your time when doing this bit by bit to pull it out. So after taking it out, this part has a gum on it because you can see sticking to my hand. So what I'm going to do now is just to place it and make sure when doing this you arrange it because they are already designed for you just to arrange. So make sure you arrange them to be in place. So after they are in place, just go on to give it a press like this. Then what you are going to do next is to press it to your, with your heat iron. So make sure your iron is heat enough to do this. So what I'm going to do now is to press it with my heat iron, then I take it off for you to see. Okay, so I have gone ahead to press it with my iron, then I will take it out. So just look for it like this and take it out. Okay, so you can see what we have right here. So I'm done with put I'm done putting on all my stones. So let me go and put it on the mannequin for you to see the finished work of what we have been making so far. You can see what we have been making so far. You can see the finished work of what we are making. You can see how beautiful it looks. So you can see our side, you can see how it's looking very nice and very neat. So in case you make for somebody that is big for this, I just want to let you know again for something. So this is the finished work, this is the back. In case you make for somebody that is big and the down part is tight, you can go ahead to extend the down part by adding 4, four inches at both sides. You're going to increase the both sides by 4, four inches by width from this your lines which are, you have here from this line which you have here you can increase it by four inches to this side and the other side so it will be three 
for your client to work. So I hope you understand what I'm trying to say. So this is the finished work. It is very, very beautiful. It's very, very nice. So thank you once again for staying tuned till this time. I really appreciate you guys for all your support, your comments, your love. All of those have been keeping pushing me that have been keeping me going. Thank you. I really love the way you guys have supported me so far. Please don't forget. I really like when you encourage me. That is giving me the bold step to take. Thank you very much. Please share to your friends and comment down below what you think about this. And don't forget to share it to my Facebook page. I have a Facebook page which I'm going to drop the link for you to follow and share yours. I'll approve it. And I have a group also on Facebook where you can share anything which you are, I have showed you that you have made. If you want to share with me, please do and do so. I promise to promote your work. Anything you have done that looks nice, I'll post it for everyone to see how it looks for you making it. So thank you very much for staying till this time. I, till this time, I really appreciate you for guys for watching. Stay safe and remain blessed.